Hello everyone and welcome back. As you know, I love my C63 ever so much, which is why at the very start of lockdown, I purchased this very car to tick off my bucket list uh, to scratch an itch essentially, which is only meant to be a short-term purchase. However, that turned out to be a love affair, which then spanned out for the next four years or so. same love affair cannot be said about my wallet as four years is a long time to own a car and it's incurred me many costs so I'm going to park up and we're going to delve into the full running costs of how much it's essentially cost me to run this car for the past four years. Right so I have my full running costs here in front of me on my iPad so apologies if I keep looking the screen because there's lots to remember and I put it into different categories um, such as fuel, um, servicing, MOT, insurance, road tax and then parts and repairs so I'll go through all of those and I'll add them all together uh, as a collective over the past four years and see how much that totals to then I will divide it by four to um, signal like how much it is per year and then I'll obviously divide that by 12 so we also get representation of what that costs monthly and then I'll probably take out the fuel again and do a separate one because not everyone wants to equate fuel into running costs as everyone's fuel is completely different. Right, so we'll start off with a cheap one. Um, obviously, to keep your car on the road legally, you need to have an MOT. And I've had four of those for the past four years. And that's been £45 per year. Um, so that costs £108 for the full four years. Um, so yeah, nice cheap one to start with. But obviously, with this MOT, you normally have a service and I take my car to a Mercedes independent specialist um, one because they're cheaper than a normal main dealer and two I think they just know a bit more about your cars um, and they take more care as well uh, so that's my personal opinion on Mercedes specialist independent and it does save you quite a bit of money too so uh, for the first service that was £520 um, and the next service was 400 pounds and then the service after that was 380 pounds and then the final service i had so far is 465 pounds and all that servicing comes to a total of 1765 pounds next up we have insurance and that really does vary from person to person it's completely arbitrary um, what sort of price you'll pay depending on like your age your location where it's parked and there's, and there's so many different variables um, but if there's one thing, one tip I can help you with these prices is that I got, um, uh, what do you call it, multi-cover insurance and it reduced my premium by loads. So if you want to save some money, that might be worth looking into. But in terms of insurance for the first year, I paid £700 with multi-cover and that was with all the other years as well. Next I paid, which is really good, £480, which I was very impressed with. And then the following year, £660 and then the final year so far is £780 but yes like I said definitely worth looking into if you want to save some money is multi-car policies as it has done me wonders as my initial quote um, for the first year was £700 but when I did a single policy when I was looking I think it would charge me £2,200 so yeah that's like a £1,500 saving but yes the total cost for insurance is £2,620. Next up we have one which is also necessary to drive the car on the road legally which is road tax which is one of the most expensive things about C63 ownership and why people sometimes are a bit put off by the experiences because the road tax is so expensive because it falls into the highest bracket. So in total for the past four years of road tax I have paid £2,000 522 pounds next up we have uh, sort of like maintenance parts and repairs um, obviously this is also really um, arbitrary because some people might have more um, expenses and more things going wrong or might have to buy more parts than other people but in my experience so far I've had um, repairs such as the air con system temperature sensor with the fan sticking on which is the fault I had last year I think where the car was essentially the fan was never turning off even though it was cold or warm it didn't matter the temperature 
didn't matter the fan kept staying on um so yeah to get that rectified the temperature sensor with labor and 20 percent plus that that cost me 392 pounds next up i had a gearbox slash diff service um something which i highly recommend if you haven't had one yet and you see 63 it really does help the car um, in terms of the way it drives and how smooth it is um, so that cost me everything including vats and the labor and everything that was 395 pounds which i don't think is too bad um, but yeah definitely something worth doing um because it really does help the way your car drives uh next up we have a uh, rough idle I had in my car um, yeah it was really rough on the startup um, so I got it down to the garage and it had to replace the cylinder 8 fuel injector and that was £216 um, next up I wanted to do this as like a preservative maintenance um, so I got the engine drive belt and pulleys done uh, that was quite expensive uh, I've seen people do it on their driveway which is probably worth doing but I'm not mechanically minded so I got them to do it and that cost me 420 pounds uh, next up i got some michelin um, ps4s put on the car all four of them changed um, got that from black circles i think they had a promotion uh, maybe like 10 percent off or something um, and yeah that was quite generous um, and that cost me 700 pounds uh, for all four tires um, Next up, we also have a faulty throttle pedal sensor. Um, yeah, that, that was a bit intermittent and I've been thinking about it into limp mode. There was a little um, error on my screen. I can't remember what it was. I think it said inoperative on the um, center of the screen. And yeah, the car essentially just went into limp mode. And just as a warning, limp mode in this car is terrible and it's quite dangerous. You put your foot down, there's like a two, three second delay when you actually get going. So. Yes, that throttle pedal sensor sent me back £261. So, for all the maintenance, repairs and um, parts, that cost me £2,365. Lastly, I want to finish off with the fuel. Um, obviously, this is really dependent on uh, how you drive it and um, how fast you drive it and how many miles you do. So, this is completely individual um, in terms of what you could be paying in terms of fuel so I don't actually have like the, all the receipts of how much um, fuel I've spent or how much fuel I've used over the years so I've had to do a, like, a little calculator online and use the information I have from my car so in my car's ownership um, I've done around 20,000 miles and an average of 20.1 miles per gallon. So I am now going to go on to fueleconomy.co.uk and then I'm going to put in the miles. So we did 20,000 miles and then the MPG we've averaged is 20.1. The fuel cost is already in, it says 96.9. This must be a very old website. Um, yeah, in terms of fuel costs, well, it's obviously changed over the past four years. So I did, went online, did some research and did like an average of what fuel prices have been. I know it's not obviously 100% accurate, so you have to take this figure with a pinch of salt. Um, but I've come to a conclusion of fuel prices have averaged over the past four years of £1.50.9 pence. So if we put all this together and then calculate, this will give me a representation of how much fuel I've roughly spent over the past four years driving 20,000 miles at 20 miles per gallon. So if we press calculate now, 6,825 pounds and 92 pence. That's a, lot, that's a lot of money, isn't it? When you actually see it like that, that is quite a lot of money. Whoa. So yeah, so that's how much you could uh, effectively be spending um, if you drive exactly like me, 20 uh, miles per gallon. Um, that is a very mix of town driving, city driving, a lot of long journeys and spirited driving. So it's probably quite a good average, but obviously if you only drive around town or do spirited driving, your figure will be much lower. And obviously if you do lots more miles than I do, or a lot less, then your figure will be completely different, which is why this is quite an arbitrary figure. But if we just now total, everything together um, 
and see how much exactly we have spent. So right, now is the time to add up everything we have spent, uh, as I've just mentioned the past few minutes. So we'll start off with the MOT, the nice cheap one, £180, plus the servicing, which was £1,765, plus the 2620 which is the insurance. Then we will use the road tax, which was £2,522, plus the parts, repairs and maintenance, which was £2,385. And lastly, plus we are going to add the fuel, which is £6,826. And if we add all that up, that equates to... <laughs> £16,298 over four years. I mean, it's not... Okay, over four years doesn't sound too bad, but that, that is a lot of money. That's like a house deposit, albeit a very cheap house deposit, but that's a lot of money, isn't it? Whoa, right. So, uh, obviously, we want to find out what that is over annually. So, if we divide that by four, that's £4,074.50. pence. Uh, it's still a lot of money, isn't it? <laughs> that is a lot of money. Right, now, if we divide that by 12, that will give us a monthly cost, which should be a bit more pleasing to the eye. £339.54. That's not too bad, actually. That's kind of what most people pay for, like, a PCP or finance for, I don't know, maybe like a 3 Series or an Audi A1. I don't know PCP finance prices these days i know it's changed since i started looking at them but that's somewhat like a rough cost of what you'd be paying a month for financing the car so it's not actually that bad is it right now i'm going to do all that again but minus the fuel costs because everyone's fuel was completely different i know obviously the insurance and servicing and parts could be different as well but i want to take fuel out of the equation because everyone does different mileage and everyone drives differently so we're going to do that all over again and that comes to a total of £9,472 over four years. That, that looks a lot more appetising, doesn't it? So now we need to divide that by four to give us a representation of uh, annual costs. So if we divide it by four, £2,368. That's more like it, isn't it? Now, if we then divide that by 12, then we will get a figure of how much we've been spending a month on this C63 since owning it without fuel. So, divide that by 12 now. £197.33. That, that's actually pleasantly surprising. I'm quite happy with that, actually. I have to say, when that 16,000 or so pounds then popped up in my, in my screen, I ha that was quite um, eye-watering, I have to admit. But now when I see like that, um, like without the fuel costs, £197.33 to have this car um, over the past four years, every month. I don't think that's too bad. Obviously, you've got to pay for the car in its own right. Um, and obviously then pay an extra £200 a month to keep it on the roads. But I don't think that's too bad, all things considered. Let me know what you think of the running costs of the C63. Was it as bad as you thought, or was it as good as you thought? A lot of people say that they're ruinously expensive and they're a money pit, and um, uh, yeah, you can only aim for a certain amount of time and it's then worth getting rid of because it's too much money to have for the foreseeable future. But now that I've seen that figure, £200 a month without fuel and then £340 to maintain this car every month with fuel. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there for now. I hope this video has helped you in some way or given you some sort of insight of what C63 um, running cost ownership is like. Um, so thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye for now.